Hi everyone! Welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I'm going to be making a terrarium out of this massive six and a half gallon glass bottle. But with one major twist. Rather than just putting in any old plants and animals in here, I am going to be attempting to, as close as possible, recreate a geologic time period. So it'll be as if I traveled back in time with my bottle, scooped up some plants, animals, dirt, and atmosphere, from that time period, capping it off, and then bring it into the future. So, it's not going to be perfect. I mean, obviously I don't have access to the genetic engineering that they could do for Jurassic Park, but my version of Jurassic Park would just have chickens instead of dinosaurs. So, you know. So, the geologic time period which I will be tackling first will be my favorite one, the Carboniferous. The geologic period from 360 to 300 million years ago. It was during this period that most of the world's coal formed. Coal is mostly carbon, hence the name Carboniferous. So, why was so much coal and carbon being formed in this time period? Well, it all comes down to the appearance of vascular plants. Very similar to this horsetail reed here. Vascular plants could of course pump water out of the ground and up to great heights. Before this time period, you really only had algaes and lichens, things that grew on a very thin surface in wet areas, you know, like covering rocks that were getting pounded by waves. Vascular plants could take that two dimensions and expand into the three dimensions that vastly increased the amount of surface area that it could interact with the sun and the biomass that it could store. However, it wasn't just that. Vascular plants had also just invented lignin, a complex organic polymer which gave them enough strength in order to stand up. Lignin is the chemical which gives wood its brownish color, and without it, the wood would resemble cotton balls. Not very strong. And actually, fellow YouTuber Nile Red just uploaded a video where he dissolved the lignin out of the wood and replaced it with an acrylic polymer which is clear, making transparent wood. Kind of a cool video. Uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing, I'll have a link down below. The thing about lignin, though, is it's a very tough material, almost impossible to digest. Nowadays, of course, we have bacteria and fungus that can break it down, but back in the Carboniferous, nothing had evolved that could eat it. No bacteria, no herbivores, nothing. And so when a vascular plant died, it would lay down on the ground, uh, bacteria and maybe the bugs and stuff could get in and consume the cellulose and the protein, but the lignin would get left behind. And then when more plants died, it would just start stacking up, eventually getting covered by sediment and compressed into coal. And something I find rather interesting is that coal is sometimes used to make plastic. And since about 90% of the world's coal was formed during the Carboniferous, most of it from lignin, that same carbon is being incorporated into another indigestible polymer. <laughs> so now, since we have all of this reduced carbon being piled up on land, it creates a huge sink which disrupts the carbon cycle on the Earth, vastly changing the Earth's atmosphere. So now, instead of carbon dioxide being released, absorbed into the oceans, and then reacting to form carbonate rock, the carbon dioxide was being consumed by plants, turned into carbon, releasing the oxygen, and this stuff sticks around, making the oxygen in the atmosphere far more concentrated. In fact, towards the end of the Carboniferous, oxygen levels were 35%, compared to the 21% we have today. But it's actually more significant than that. You see, nitrogen and argon, such as uh, what I have here, really didn't change much over geologic history. We might have lost a little bit of nitrogen through you know, spallation, through cosmic rays, or we might have formed a little bit more argon as the radioactive potassium decays. But for the most part, levels remain constant. So what we have is you're adding a bunch of oxygen to the atmosphere without changing the other gases, which means the air pressure was higher. Today we have a sea level atmospheric pressure of about 760 torr. Back then the air pressure was about 920. And the difference is made up entirely to oxygen, 
which means that the atmospheric concentration of oxygen was about twice what it is now. The terrestrial animals that existed during this period were things like early amphibians and arthropods, uh, invertebrate things like insects. And because of the high oxygen levels, those were able to grow very large. Today they are limited by the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. They can only grow so big before uh, the amount of body mass exceeds their capability of absorbing oxygen. Increase the oxygen in the air, they can grow much larger. The Meganeura, uh, very similar to dragonflies, were able to grow to wingspans of a meter across. And you would have had things like uh, millipedes running around in the underbrush of the giant forests the size of anacondas. Of course, I'm not going to be able to have an anaconda-sized millipede, but I can put some normal millipedes in here and see how big they get. I don't expect them to grow a whole lot larger. You need evolution to really boost that, but let's see what happens. As you can see over here, I've got loads of plants, and these are all things that are descended from plants that would have been around during the Carboniferous. So of course we have mosses, we have liverworts. You can see I've got most of these in bags because they like high humidity. Liverwort. Reeds and ferns. And for the animals, I've collected some bugs that were in my yard. See, we've got some millipedes, uh, centipedes. I have a slug. I, I thought that slugs would be around, but turns out uh, land slugs didn't evolve until the Cretaceous, so I might leave these guys out. I also have some smaller bugs. Uh, these are springtails. These springtails are really cute. I do hope they grow larger, but even at the size they are now, they are great for getting rid of uh, excess mold. So the first thing I need to do is put in some gravel down in the bottom of this chamber to act as a storage for water. So we're going to make an aquifer. This is some uh, quartzite pebbles, uh, originally intended for fish tanks. So it's just some fish tank gravel here. Pour it in, hopefully it doesn't damage the glass. Before I'm finished with the gravel, I want to mix in a different type of gravel. So this is some uh, carbonate pebbles. This is Mississippian limestone. So this actually formed during the earlier half of the Carboniferous uh, in uh, shallow seas. So it was mostly formed from animal shales. Uh, this one is actually a piece of oolitic limestone, which is interesting. And the reason I'm adding this is to give a source of calcium and also act as a pH buffer. If it becomes too acidic in the bottle, these will begin to dissolve keeping the pH uh, more towards the neutral end. While I'm at it, I'm also going to add in some fertilizer. So this is mostly a calcium phosphate here. Act as a source of phosphorus. Along with some uh, potassium chloride, potassium nitrate, a little bit of uh, iron chelate, some magnesium sulfate, boron, manganese, molybdenum, copper. I actually weighed out uh, far too much. I'm just going to add in maybe a, a third of this. But I want to make sure there's plenty of nutrients available. So now I'm going to add in a little bit of water. This is uh, some distilled water. Uh, just enough that I can see maybe a half inch on the bottom of the chamber. Just enough to supply water to the aquifer. So now I'm going to add a mixture of peat moss and charcoal. This is actually activated charcoal. The peat moss will simulate the high carbon environment that would have made up the forest floors of the Carboniferous. And the charcoal will represent the high amounts of charcoal that would have been around due to the periodic forest fires. So now I need to add a layer of charcoal. Charcoal is also pretty good to use in terrariums because it absorbs odors and toxins quite well. I have a little a tool here that I can use to reach in and move things around. If I wanted to pick up some of this peat moss, I can. Knock it around. So there you go. A little layer of gravel with water and some peat moss. So now I guess it's time for the plants. Let's start with some of these ferns. So I got a little uh, rock tassel fern here. Let's open this up. See what we can do about getting it inside this bottle. Cute little plant, yeah? 
Let's get it out of its pot. Okay. It don't fit. <laughs> I'm going to have to basically shake all the dirt off of its roots, probably. So I've dramatically decreased the bulk. Let's see if we can get it in there now. It just barely fits. That's all I need. Let's grab hold of it with my little grabber. So I can... No, that's not going to work. Let's lower it in. Use my grabber. Dig a little hole for it. Now, if I can pick it up and put it in the hole without hurting it, that'd be great. Okay, I got the little fern in place. It was not easy, and it's not exactly standing straight up. I might be able to tweak it over a little bit. It doesn't matter too much. It'll it'll find its vertical eventually. And now I get to do it about uh, ten more times with the other plants. I am, however, going to introduce the animals now before I get too many plants. Uh, I'm going to try to keep the slugs out. Uh, I won't permanently seal this bottle. So if you guys think I should put the slugs in, uh, let me know down in the comments and I might add them at a later date. There's my centipede, which is probably the largest animal that will be going in here today. I'm going to keep this clover out because that is not of the period. Here goes the springtails. I'm not going to put all of them in. I want to save some to add to my uh, trees that I'm trying to root to keep the mold from growing. Okay, so I just separated out a cluster of these reeds. Now these are of course too tall for the bottle so I might have to cut them short. You can see there's a couple of new ones growing up there. So it really shouldn't be too much trouble to just break these off so they'll actually fit. Now of course it's going to grow up and all around, but that's alright. <laughs> I'm also going to put in a smaller dwarf variety of these reeds. These won't get as big and will probably fit the bottle better. Okay, all the plants and animals are in there. I'm just going to spritz it with a little bit of water to wash them the dirt down off the side of the bottle and also water in the plants. Peat moss is actually quite dry. So I was just informed that the peat moss I'm using might be highly acidic. So let's mix some with water and check it with some pH paper. That's a little orange. Yeah, that's like a three or four. Now, plants do like acidic conditions, but not that acidic. So, I do have some calcium carbonate in the bottle, which will deal with that acid, but it won't be very fast. I'm going to need something with a higher surface area. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind up some chalk, mix it with water, maybe even a little bit of aqueous ammonia, and I'm going to dump that in the bottle, and that'll knock down the acid uh, very quickly. And then if it continues to get acidic as the uh, moss breaks down, uh, then the calcium carbonate should handle that. So now, of course, I've got to change the atmosphere. So I need to put a plug in this that won't come out, that I can pressurize with a little bit of oxygen. So this is what I've come up with to seal in the oxygen. As you can see, I've got a rubber stopper, which I've shoved a shorter valve through. And to hold it in place, I've wired it on with the help of this hose clamp here. Anyway, to get the atmosphere in the bottle the same as it would have been during the Carboniferous, we need to 
add some oxygen. So to do that, I'm going to just put this uh, rubber hose over top of the Schroeder valve, kind of screw it on here. I need to be able to activate the valve, so I'm going to drop in a nail. Now to account for the fact that I'm not at sea level, uh, I need to pressurize the bottle a little bit with just normal air. Uh, for that, I'm just going to use my breath. Okay, that should be enough air. So now I'm going to hook up the torch. I'm going to turn on just the oxygen. Now I'm going to set the torch regulator for 5 pounds per square inch. And now I just activate the Schroeder valve. And the oxygen's flowing in. And that's probably it. Turn off the O2. And now I'll replace the little valve cap. Now we have a Carboniferous Terrarium fully made. Oh, there's a springtail. See it? Crawl on the glass. So we know they've at least survived. It's been about two days since my last cut. You might be asking how I plan to maintain the oxygen level if I don't open the jar. And well, it should stay more or less the same. You see the animals will consume the plant matter in here, releasing carbon dioxide, and then as long as I've got plenty of light, the plants should convert the carbon dioxide back into plants, releasing oxygen. So the o total oxygen level should remain about the same. Just to be sure, I can periodically check the atmosphere of the bottle. I did, after all, leave a port here. And if the oxygen levels get out of whack, I can correct it. One thing that would make me open the jar is if there was, say, a flowering plant or some other species that didn't belong uh, that managed to find its way into here. I would have to, you know, get in there with my little gripper and pull it out. Or maybe use my laser to zap it, you know, burn it to death. But uh, considering the high oxygen environment, that might be a bad idea. I'll have to do some tests to see exactly what happens if I do try to burn something in a high oxygen environment like this. It's not pure oxygen, but it is you know, twice the oxygen, so it should burn faster, but also everything in here is wet, so I don't really know. I am going to find out though. I've got my big pressure chamber all cleaned up and it's ready to go. And I was going to include some of those tests in this video here, but it's just getting too long. I think I'm going to make a separate video for that, and I'll give you guys an update on how this is doing at that time. So, let me know what you guys think. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.